The NOICE program is a program where we give students fiscal support and we try to develop a community of learners uh, to, help, to help those teachers when they go into the field to be better math and science teachers. And we do that um, by having regular uh, meetings and we, and by having these students connect with each other um, and having the more experienced NOICE scholars interact with our new NOICE scholars, some of which are undergraduate students. And by developing that community and fostering that community, uh, we hope to be able to impact STEM education in the K-12 schools. And one of the great things about the NOICE program is that we get to have little mini conferences on a regular basis where we get to get together and talk about what we're doing in the classroom and I really love that because there's a lot of tips and tricks for classroom management, there's good ideas for projects, um, you know the opportunities we have here too at Sonoma State to do things like the maker programs. That has all been a huge influence and has helped me be a better rounded teacher. We look at their achievement um, in the sciences in their major and so we have undergraduate students that are coming in uh, from juniors up and then we have people in the credential program and now that we've been around for five years we have a total of almost 55 NOI scholars and they are from undergrads all the way up in teaching four years. But I also find that working with my other NOI scholars um, gives me a bigger breadth of, um, of knowledge. Uh, there's another NOI scholar, Kelly Kennedy, over at Sonoma Valley High, who's also teaching engineering and I had the opportunity to go visit her classroom uh, on one of my off days and um, that really helped me get a better sense of what I could do with my in my classroom. We have to have a very different way of having our STEM teachers connect with the students and have a different kind of uh, activity, different kind of pedagogy that our teacher candidates will work with their students. And so things like having our teacher candidates actually engage our students in inquiry, letting them be citizen scientists, as it was an example of this, where they actually have to go out and collect data and use data as part of their learning. But that's the kind of instruction that we're trying to support here. So it's really important for a teacher to engage students by first engaging them on a personal level and being their bridge from content to, uh, to student and to a realia of their real life. Um, I do that a lot but with project-based learning. Um, I was able to go to a seminar for project-based learning and throughout this year we've been able to do a lot of really fun projects. The kids first did a project about sci called Science and Social Media where they had to find and research a claim that was made on social media and either debunk it or support it with uh, credible evidence. We just wrapped on a project called It's Your School Pool. We just had a new pool put in and the prompt was to research and propose the best water treatment option for Novato High's new pool. That took into account various factors including cost and health and maintenance. And that was really interesting because they actually got to sample our pool water. Uh, they designed and implemented their own lab experiments and then later uh, presented uh, our pool should be bromine or chlorine or saltwater systems. And through that they were able to learn about you know, chemical equilibrium and pH and all sorts of solution chemistry that might not have been more as accessible to them otherwise. Working with the students, I have done the dry lecture. I've been that person and I've been the, the lecturer that's strict and make sure that they're sitting in their seat and that they're, they're doing their problems out of the book. And uh, like you mentioned, the, the engagement, although maybe they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're not learning. They're memorizing a process that's going to, to leave them. So when we get them working on a project uh, that integrates all of these, the, the math, the science, the engineering, uh, it's, it's engaging to the point where they come to me with questions. And I mean, isn't that science in general? Uh, asking questions and finding ways to figure them out. Uh, you're not going to have too many kids coming to you after a 15 question worksheet saying, oh, what happens if X is squared in this case? It's just not as exciting. So it's wonderful to, to get them 
engaged to the point where they will see the, the value in it. I'm really excited about the NGSS, the Next Generation Science Standards, because it focuses less on reciting content and instead on developing critical thinkers. Um, and I was really lucky to be part of a program that allowed me as an educator to develop as a critical thinker and really reflect on what practices am I doing and, and how do these meet our new um, disciplinary core ideas or cross-cutting concepts that the NGSS framework lays out. Instead of just focusing on meeting standard A, B, C, and D, it's really evaluating students on their ability to think like a scientist. STEM innovation is really going to depend upon a diverse talent pool, being behind the STEM ideas that go about making change. And so when we think about who should be part of that innovation, it's got to be everybody for it to really be the innovative kind of advancement that's going to tackle some of these really challenging, interesting, and often very fun problems that we face. It's really important in science that students see how what they're learning applies to their everyday life. So giving them pro topics where they, can, um, where they can study chemistry in their world, in their pool, in their home, in the products that they use every day, in the social media that they use, uh, that's how you build engagement and that's how you get the most student involvement. I found that students are most successful when they're doing projects as opposed to doing uh, reading out of a textbook or watching lectures. We do very little of that. Um, it's student-centered, it's student-driven, and there's a lot of choice, which allows them to really study anything that they want. Of course, when you do that kind of work, you have to build in the scaffolds and build in the check-ins. Uh, and when you do things like projects or, or flipping your classroom, you have an hour with a full class every day to check in and see where they're at, see what they need, and, and to make that relationships with them and the relationships with science for them. I hope that students in my classroom take away a sense of pride of what they've accomplished um, and also the sense of what's possible for them. Um, one of the best things about this engineering class is the exposure it's giving to my students um, for a breadth of, of careers and possibilities. I have one girl that during the robotics project learning how to code, um, she is so excited about coding and is currently looking for a summer internship or additional classes she can take to uh, learn more about how to pr computer program. I think it really might be a viable career for her. I hope that the noise scholars teach us, right? So some of the initiatives in place uh, in single subject uh, preparation program where we have our faculty connecting with teachers, connecting with teacher candidates uh, through their, the different uh, professional development model of teacher uh, of student teaching that we're proposing, um, I, I think that I think we will learn from our noise scholars too, and and I think that we need to be part of that community as well.